For more on this, we're, we are joined by former Democratic New York Congressman Max Rose, former New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio, and former Congressman David Jolly, who served as a Republican from Florida. Congressman Rose, let me start with you, because leading this hearing is Republican Jim Jordan of Ohio. And according to the Columbus Dispatch, Columbus, Ohio, which Jordan represents, has a higher homicide rate than New York City. So... Is this all just political theater, or is there a real conversation about crime to be had here? It's great to see you. Yes, this is 100 percent political theater, and in fact, it's really a conspir conspiracy-laden smokescreen designed to distract the American people from the fact that Donald Trump broke the law, not just in New York, but also in Washington, D.C., and in Georgia, and there will be many more, well, several more cases to come, most likely. But the problem with the Democratic Party often is that we uh, stick to facts and just a policy-laden discussion, when the truth of the matter is, is that whatever Jim Jordan says, will be taken by Fox News and the rest of the far right echo chamber and spread as gospel. So what needs to happen alongside this fact-driven and policy-driven uh, line of argument is another sincere focus on the fact that Jim Jordan, the lead messenger for this effort, has had multiple uh, sexual assault allegations uh, driven against him that are absolutely Credible. We need to focus on the fact that the majority of the weapons moving into New York City are coming from red lead states. These are the types of arguments that also need to be put forth by the Democratic Party because this is absolutely political theater, as you said. So it makes it sound like you don't think Democrats are fighting back effectively. Well, I, I think that it needs to be more effective because the Democratic Party needs to understand that this is politics coming from the far right. This is not about policy for them, and they will do everything to distract the American people or to attempt to distract the American people from the actual facts of the case against Donald Trump because those facts are not on their side. So they're talking about crime. At least that's how they have, you know— that is the focus of this hearing, is, is what they're saying. And so you look at the facts here in New York City, and I'll come to you, Mayor de Blasio, on this one, since you uh, were the, the top dog, so to speak, here in the city for quite some time. We know in just the, the last year or so, in 2022, shootings and murders went down in New York City. Overall major crime went up, however, largely driven by robberies and burglaries. Republicans say the Manhattan District Attorney's Office should be cracking down on violent criminals instead of going after Donald Trump for hush money payments. What's your response? Well, I think it's very clear that crime is going down rapidly in New York City. And New York City is recovering from what caused the crime, which was the, the horrible dislocation that this whole country felt during COVID. But we were the epicenter. Alvin Bragg, uh, with Mayor Adams, with all of law enforcement in New York City, is working to drive down crime, and the numbers say that it is working. But let's face it, this hearing really isn't about crime. That's not what's motivating. What's motivating them here is an attempt to uh, intimidate a Alvin Bragg. It's one of several things you're seeing Jim Jordan doing, uh, including the subpoena. It's also an attempt to distract. The whole problem here is they don't have an answer for all of the things that Donald Trump has done that has led him to more than one uh, criminal accusation. You're going to see a whole host of accusations play out in court over the next few weeks. And this hearing is trying to take the focus off it. I think it's backfiring, though, Anna. I think Jim Jordan's attempt it looks pretty uh, desperate. And it's just reminding people that the actual criminal, the actual person who's going to trial is Donald Trump. But what do you say to those who think Donald Trump has been unfairly singled out, targeted because of political motivations? Well, you know, you can't have this many different cases by legitimate law enforcement authorities in multiple jurisdictions, federal and state, uh, and, and just say, oh, look, this is all political. I don't buy that one bit. This is all based on evidence. In fact, the truth, the sad truth, Anna, in New York is that for many years, Donald Trump got away with a lot, and the law enforcement system wasn't maybe as strong as it could have been. He was very connected. He used his money very wisely. And we know of many situations where there were questionable business practices and other activities that did not lead to prosecution. I think the fact that there's finally prosecution in multiple jurisdictions says that he just went too far. He thought he could get away with it. Well, the game's up now.
Well, let's just remind everybody, though, that he is only facing criminal charges in one ju jurisdiction. Civil case, obviously, also in New York, but the other uh, ongoing investigations are just that. They're ongoing. There haven't been any additional charges brought at this time. Congressman Jolly, though, I want to just come back to the fact that these are members of Congress taking on a local prosecutor coming to New York to hold a hearing instead of holding the hearing in Washington. Just how unusual is this? It's highly, and it needs to be condemned. <clears throat> Excuse me. Republicans continue to attack prosecutors, attack law and order. They've done it directly by subpoenaing uh, members of, uh, of Alvin Bragg's office, a former prosecutor. They're asking for documents from Bragg. Unprecedented. What you're seeing today, though, is their effort to try to remove this from the court of law into the court of public opinion. And the mayor and Congressman Rose are exactly right. This is Jim Jordan's effort to delegitimize Alvin Bragg and to undermine his credibility. Credibility, because if they can project upon, you know, conservative voters, the Fox, the Fox News viewers, if you will, that Alvin Bragg does not have legitimacy, well, then the charges don't. And if there were to be a conviction, obviously that comes into question as well. Listen, that the many of the witnesses today are election deniers, J6 instigators. Uh, Antifa was behind J6. This is a bit of a Republican roadshow that you would anticipate. It does say, though, Anna, there is a permanency to their support of Donald Trump, where many have thought that maybe prosecutors could get Donald Trump out of the picture for other Republicans to come forward. Jordan, Gates, and others are saying, no, Donald Trump's our man, and we're going to back him up all the way through 24, even if it means interfering in a local prosecution. But I don't understand that, Congressman Jolly. Why wouldn't <laughs> Republicans use the Trump indictment as their chance to break with him? <laughs> I know. You know what's interesting? Look, this is a this is a view into internal Republican politics in a real way, Anna, because the party elders, if you will, the, the Mitch McConnells uh, and even the Kevin McCarthy's, though he has it both ways, all of them do want to be past Donald Trump. But that is not the winning hand in Republican politics. The winning hand remains the Stefanik, Jim Jordan, Matt Gates, Marjorie Taylor Greene caucus. That is the epicenter of Republican politics today. And so this defense of Donald Trump right now is very telling. We saw him move up in the polls after the indictment. We see his hand strengthening in the Republican nomination. This remains Donald Trump's party, and nobody has shown a way to take him out. There are lots of layers to this discussion today. Wish we had even more time. Thank you all for being with us. I really, really appreciate truly your time this morning and your perspective on this. Former Congressman Max Rose, former New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio, and former Congressman David Jolly.